welcome to NovaCon's tutorial series for the Taurus Servo Spindle Motor Control. The purpose of this segment is to provide a basic illustration of programming while observing the responses of the Taurus Spindle under program control. We can control spindle free running and perform direct spindle rotational control in the tapping mode. It should be noted that during tapping mode the spindle motor operates under fourth axis control which allows for very precise rotational control of its position. The key features in providing this capability is Novacon's new Revision 2 breakout board, which utilizes the switching capability using its onboard microprocessor that monitors the activity of the fourth axis spindle output control lines. The breakout board microprocessor makes a functional decision based on the setting of the onboard tap switch. The following program is a basic demonstration of control using a Mach 3 program, showing a simple sequence for axis movements spindle rotation, and spindle helical coordinated travel with the z-axis. Upon completion of the following Mach 3 program segment, we will run the program again, line by line, in single step mode, while describing each program line for clarification. In this section, we will now dissect the functions of each line of G-code as we rerun the sample program. As we begin running the program, we will ensure that the milling machine has been referenced to home and we have a known starting point to begin operations. We will select the single block icon button to enable single stepping mode. We can be begin the program by pressing cycle start, causing the program to begin the execution from the first line, then sequentially step by step until the end of the program. The first line simply signifies the coordinates are absolute values. We further set the spindle speed at 1000 RPM. You will notice that the spindle speed DRO has changed to 1000. The next command sets the feed rate DRO to 30 inches per minute. Further flow of the program sets G0 for rapid movement, Z placement to 1 inch, and moves the X and Y coordinates to 0. At this time, code G1 selects linear interpolation mode at the selected feed rate. The spindle height is now lowered to zero, preparing the cutter for operation. We've chosen to use coolant and have turned coolant on with the M8 and selected spindle clockwise direction with M3. You will notice the spindle DRO will now indicate the spindle is active and rotating at 1000 RPM clockwise. The table will move in a square geometric pattern, returning back at zero, zero. The spindle is turned off by using M5 command, and likewise the coolant is turned off using M9. You will notice the spindle display DRO and the flood coolant icon turn off. We will now begin movement of the spindle to a predetermined location for a simulated tapping cycle. You will see the spindle move to the coordinate position 1, 1, and lower its elevation to 0. At this time, we will invoke linear interpolation once again and begin preparing for the tapping cycle. We will now perform a tool change to mount the tap. We presume at this time the pilot hole has been drilled prior to the tapping cycle. The command starts the spindle coolant and begins a helical rotation cut by rotating the spindle five turns clockwise at the same time we lower the z-axis 0.5 inches. This represents any tap cycle with a 10-pitch thread tool. At this time, we will change back to rapid movement and reverse the helical cut to extract the tap from the workpiece. This completes the tapping cycle for this operation. The spindle coolant is now turned off. We have reprogrammed the feeds and speeds to zero for demonstration purposes. You will notice the feed rate and spindle speed dialog boxes have been set to zero. The spindle now moves to a reference position one inch above the work and the program ends. This completes the tutorial of this program. We will now proceed to the next segment using the MDI for manual discrete 
mill control. In this segment, we will manually input commands to demonstrate user input control. We will make sure that we are in the MDI screen for this discussion. By utilizing the input command line, we prepare the machine by typing in G0, G90, S1000, and F50, followed by the enter key. You will also notice in the dialog box as the appropriate changes have been made pertaining to these command inputs. We now take control of the spindle and invoke one of the two breakout board operating modes. We can manually select spindle continuous operation by using the code M3, followed by the enter key, to turn on the spindle. M4, followed by the enter key, to reverse the spindle. And M5, followed by the enter key, to turn off the spindle. Spindle speed may be adjusted by using the stepping arrows within the DRO dialog box. Additionally, feed rate may be changed in the DRO dialog box for feed rate. When simple tapping is performed, a coordinated helical cut can be initiated manually. The same way the program utilized the helical interpolation, we may also enter the same code, which is A5, Z minus 0.5, followed by the enter key, and the spindle will now perform a 10-pitch helical cut downward and in the clockwise direction. By entering the value A0Z0, followed by the enter key, we will return the spindle back in counterclockwise helical direction. We have programmed the keyboard hot keys for the fourth axis to be controlled by the F and R keys representing forward and reverse rotational motion of the spindle. These keys operate the same way as the access directional keyboard keys using the shift or control in combination with the key stroke. Notice that without using any other key and pressing the F or the R key, you will cause the rotation of the spindle to change the DRO by the number of revolutions indicated by the fourth axis DRO. More precise control of the spindle rotation may be accomplished by using the shift or control key to precisely locate any rotational position desired. This concludes this tutorial on the operational use for the servo spindle control by Mach 3.